In this video, we're going to look at how we can apply the general torsion equation in order to calculate shear stresses and angle of twist or angle of deflection on various different shafts. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is that we have a three-part equation, much like the bending equation. And when we have these three-part equations, we need to select the appropriate terms from the equation before we carry out any calculations. And we'll see how to do that when we look at some examples. Before we do that, let's just look at what some of these variables represent in the torsion equation. First of all, T is the torque. And torque is measured in Newton meters. It's best thought of as a kind of twisting force that's being applied to the piece of material. J is something called the polar second moment of area. And the units for polar second moment of area are meters to the fourth. Now, much like with bending, as we'll see in a moment, the stress isn't going to be evenly distributed throughout the shaft. Therefore, using areas wouldn't be appropriate for calculating our shear stresses. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. Tor is our shear stress. And shear stress is measured in pascals. R is the radius of the shaft. And radius is measured in meters. We have G, which is the modulus of rigidity. We've seen this parameter before. So modulus of rigidity also measured in pascals. We have the angle of twist. Now it's important to note that that's measured in radians. And finally, we have the length of the shaft. Length measured in meters. So first of all, let's return to the idea that the stress isn't evenly distributed throughout the shaft. Now, if we take a look at our diagram, I want you to imagine that we're going to twist this through a given angle. And when we twist it through a given angle, different positions within the material are displaced by different amounts. Now, hopefully you can visualize this. On the outside surface, we have the maximum displacement. And as we move closer to the center, the displacement's less and less. And in actual fact, the displacement at the center is going to be zero. Now that relates directly to the stress profile because the stress on the outside surface is going to be maximum and the stress at the center is going to be zero. Here we're talking about shear stress because we're shearing the material as we twist it. So for these reasons, we can't use the area of the shaft. We have to use the polar second moment of area. So when we move to the second term in that equation, we have the radius. Now, if we want to determine the maximum stress, then we need to use the outside radius of the shaft, like so. If we wanted to determine the stress at any other position on that shaft, then we would need to adjust the radius accordingly. And I'll give you an example of this when we look at a hollow shaft in the next example. We have the angle of twist theta. And that would be represented by this angle here. We also have the modulus of rigidity, which is a property of the material. And all of the other variables there should be relatively self-explanatory. So let's take a look at a practical example. And in the bottom left hand corner, we have some data. We have a torque stated in Newton meters and we have a shaft diameter stated in millimeters. We're going to begin by calculating the shear stress acting on the shaft, and then we're going to calculate the angle of twist. So for the first part of this example, we know the torque, meaning we need to use the term on the left-hand side of the equation. And we're trying to calculate the stress, meaning we're going to use the second term. So here we have T over J equals Tor over R. 
and the variable that we're trying to calculate is the shear stress tor. Well, in order to get tor on its own, all we need to do is multiply each side of the equation by r, and we'll get tor equals tr over j. Well, we don't yet know j, so we're going to need to calculate it, and the formula that we use for j is pi d to the fourth over 32. We don't need to look at the derivation of that equation. That's a standard equation for polar second moment of area of a solid shaft. Now we do need to take a bit of care here because we have the diameter in millimeters and we need to convert that to meters. So J is going to be pi times D in meters, well 22 divided by 1000 is 0.022 divided by 32. And that gives us a j value equal to 2.30 times 10 to the minus 8 meters to the fourth. So we have our answer in SI units. Now, because we want to know the maximum stress, we need to use an R value that represents the outer surface of our shaft. So our R value is going to be 11 millimeters. Now once again we need to work in metres, but we can calculate our stress, torque, using TR over J. Our torque is 125, our radius is 11 divided by 1000, so 0.011, divided by our J value, which we've just determined as 2.30 times 10 to the minus 8. Now running that through the calculator gives a stress value equal to 59.79 megapascals. In actual fact, the full calculator answer is 59,787,732. But I'm converting that straight into megapascals for simplicity. So next we can calculate our angle of twist. And we have a choice here, because if we refer to our equation, we know that we need to use the term on the right hand side, because our angle of twist variable is tied up in this term. We can use T over J equals G theta over L, or we can use Tor over R equals G theta over L. So I'm going to use T over J equals G theta over L. And I need to rearrange that to make theta the subject. Now the way that I would do that is by multiplying each side by L and then dividing each side by G. So I'll get theta equals T L divided by J G. Okay, let's plug in some numbers. T is 125. Let's go for a length of 1.3 meters. Let's add that to our list of variables. We have a J value of 2.30 times 10 to the minus 8 and we'll go for a G value of 95 gigapascals. And again we'll add that to our list of variables. G equals 95 GPA. Well, 95 gigapascals is 95, and giga is times 10 to the 9. So we have theta equals 125 times 1.3 over 2.30 times 10 to the minus 8 times 95 times 10 to the 9. And that gives us an answer equal to 0 0.0744. Now it's important to point out that that answer is in radians. Our torsion equation gives us answers in radians. But if we want that in degrees, we need to do a conversion. And the simplest way to think about the conversion from radians to degrees is that we need to multiply by the number of degrees in a circle, which is 360, and divide by the number of radians in a circle, which is 2 pi. So our conversion is times 360 over 2 pi. So we get theta 
equals 0 0.0744 times 360 over 2 pi, which gives us an answer in degrees equal to 4.26 degrees. So the angle of twist for that solid shaft is 4.26 degrees when it experiences a stress of 59.79 megapascals. Let's repeat all of those calculations, except this time let's use a hollow shaft. Okay, so this time we can see that we have a hollow shaft. The outside diameter is still 22 millimeters, but I've specified an inside diameter of 16 millimeters. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is recalculate our J value. Now the formula for the J value for a hollow shaft is very similar to the formula that we used previously, except instead of just being pi d to the fourth over 32, we need to do pi outside diameter to the fourth minus inside diameter to the fourth, all divided by 32. So we need to accommodate the fact that the shaft's now hollow. So once again, we need to work in meters. So we have pi, well, the outside diameter is still 22, but expressed in meters, that's 0 0.022 to the fourth, minus inside diameter to the fourth, well, the inside diameter is 16 millimeters, dividing by 1,000 to get meters is 0 0.016 to the fourth, all divided by 32. And running that through the calculator gives a J value equal to 1.656 times 10 to the minus 8 meters to the fourth. So somewhat smaller than the J value we had for the solid shaft, and that's what we would expect as the shaft is now hollow. We can calculate our stress using TR over j, the same as before, t is 125, r is the radius at the outside of the shaft, and we're going to use that value because we want to know the maximum stress. So 11 divided by 1000 is 0 0.011 as before, over j 1.656 times 10 to the minus 8. Okay, now running that through the calculator gives us a stress in megapascals equal to 83.01 megapascals. Now once again, that's higher than when we had the solid shaft. The reason being is because there's less material to resist that torque. We've got the same torque, but we've got less material. We've got a smaller J value. Now I just want to demonstrate how that stress would differ on the inside of the shaft. So we've just calculated the stress on the outside of the shaft here, but what would the stress be on the inside of the shaft? Now the way that we would calculate that is just by adjusting the radius. And instead of using the radius to the outside of the shaft, we need to use the radius to the inside of the shaft. We have an inside diameter of 16 mil, Therefore, we have an inside radius of 8 mil. So here we have tor equals t inside radius over j. The j value doesn't change. 125 times the inside radius, well, 8 mil is 0 0.008 meters. And the j value is still 1.656 times 10 to the minus 8. And that gives us a stress equal to. 60.37 megapascals. Now this serves to highlight that the maximum stress occurs on the outside surface of the shaft. And after all, it is the maximum stress that we're interested in because this will determine whether the component's going to fail or not. We're just going to do one more calculation and we're going to do the calculation for the angle of twist. So we already have a formula for angle of twist. We said the angle of twist equals TL over JG. And that will give us an angle of twist in radians. We know the torque is 125. 
we know the length is 1.3 meters. We know J is 1.656 times 10 to the minus 8. We have a G value of 95 gigapascals. Now we also know that our conversion from radians to degrees is times 360 over 2 pi. So running that all through the calculator gives us an angle of twist equal to 5.92 degrees. So once again, as we would expect, the stress is higher on the hollow shaft and the angle of twist is also higher. OK, let's assume that the stress of 83 megapascals is too high. And in actual fact, the maximum allowable stress on our component is 75 megapascals as an example. We can use the equation to determine the maximum allowable torque. So let's clear some space and take a look at that calculation. So this time I've amended the data because we're saying that the maximum stress on our sample of material is 75 megapascals. And what we want to know is the maximum torque that we can apply to that test piece or component. So this time we're going to use the first two terms from our equation that are highlighted, T over J equals Tor over R, but we need to rearrange that to make T the subject. So T over J equals Tor over R. And what we need to do is multiply each side by J in order to get T on its own. And we'll get T equals Tor J over R. And because it's the maximum torque and the maximum stress, the R value we need to use is the radius to the outside of the shaft. So let's plug some numbers. We have T equals Tor, or Tor is 75 megapascals. Mega is times 10 to the 6. J for our hollow shaft, we already know, is 1.656 times 10 to the minus 8. And the radius to the outside of our shaft is 11 millimetres, or 0.011 metres. So running that through the calculator gives us a maximum allowable torque equal to 112.9 newton metres. So here we can see that's roughly 10% less than the 125 newton metres that it was previously being subjected to. So just to summarise, we've seen how the general torsion equation can be used to calculate stress and angle of twist on a shaft. We've looked at how we can calculate the stress on both the inside and the outside of a hollow shaft. And we did that in order to prove that the stress on the outside surface was greatest. And finally, we've seen how we can use the general torsion equation to calculate the maximum allowable torque when the maximum allowable stress is known.